friends. <laughs> hello, we are live, and we already said hello, but say let's say hello again. Hello, hello. Brian. Hello, Caroline. Caroline. Hello. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hello. The bridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barbara and Tyler. A happy group today. Very good. And I repeat yes. what I just said before we came live. I said, uh, if you go away feeling good in the now, that's the beginning of a new cycle of good feelings. So keep that going, and you'll you'll actually build a cycle of great feelings. Uh, and uh, of course, some bad feelings will always be there, but you can get rid of them a lot faster if you keep a cycle of, uh, of positive nows. So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, that's the law of attraction, right? Right, is the law of attraction. If you... It works very, very, very well. But first, before you can... Before you really get into the law of attraction, it has to be starting to work for you. And then it, then it just drives forward on its own, really. But the first part is hard, keeping yourself positive, keeping those emotions behind the things that you want to draw to you, keeping those words constantly positive because um, if, you, if you hear yourself being negative, that goes into the cycle, at least for right now. Because the cycle has always been, has please, been negative. Please, an echo, please. What? There's an echo. Please, could you, could you please mute yourselves, everybody? I hear echoes. Oh, okay. Um, but if you do the positive, it the power of the law of attraction is working so well for me, I can't tell you enough about it. Because until it started to work, I had some doubts. But those doubts went into the cycle and made it a little longer. But now that it, it's coming forth, it's so much easier to be positive and it's so much easier to accept because what you do is you ask, you believe, and you receive. And it works. But it might take a little while, sometimes six weeks before it starts really getting into a good cycle. But you can do it. It's fabulous. So... I'm living proof of that. <laughs> I think the aliens helped me a little bit, though. They really kept me positive about some things. I don't know. I yes. Um, if you focus on negativity, like on global conspiracy, you will find so much proof it's real, and then you will realize they watch you and they interfere with your life, and you become a victim of interference. And you know that's where we all start. How do you get out of that? I know. How do you get out of that? You create your own universe, of course, because when you create your own universe, the things that you don't want in your universe have to go. They won't stay. Because a lot of times, the people that in your universe that you don't want there are not creating their own universe, and they're just stuck in yours. So if you want to create your own universe and bring visualize the things that you want in your universe, then you can do that. And I've, and I've had several people say when they create their own universe, the people that were giving them a hard time moved out of their universe. Does that make sense to you? Because they weren't creating your universe. You were keeping them in your universe because you thought they were supposed to be there or they you just hadn't created that they weren't supposed to be there. So... I will give you an example with the homework. Say you're in school and you don't do your homework. Your spelling is your spelling is bad. It sucks. And then you think the whole world is against you, and you are a victim of global conspiracy of people who wants you who want you to spell right, and you don't spell right. But if you do your homework and learn how to spell right, then you're out of that. And the same thing with the global conspiracy. You do your homework, you figure out who are these conspirators, and you just know who they are and say, hello, we know who you are, that's it. We are over with that. We know we are being watched, we know we are being recorded, we know we are being censored, that's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, we are used to that, we did our homework, we know who they are, they know who we are, we are friends of yours, we love you. 
and without you the world will crash we know that but you know we go beyond that same with bicycle you know if you don't learn how to ride the bicycle you have to be like really focused and you know if you'll focus you will still fall down but when you learn how to ride the bicycle you just ride it mm -hmm. and it's fun the other thing about the law of attraction is people see that you are, things are coming to you and the people that were against you move farther away because they there's some they figure that <coughs> something's happening that they don't want to be a part of uh, because you're getting stronger with them and and giving out an energy that they're not wanting to receive so um, I found in my universe that I am creating and in, in my universe that that um, that is around me it's it's so much more positive than it used to be the the people that were bringing me down something happens and they can't be around anymore and um, and it's a wonderful thing yeah like Bob Dean uh, was uh, it's like the famous you for uh, a researcher that contacts you one of the most famous ones um, you know men in black were hanging on the black helicopter you know threatening him when he did like his contacts he went into his house, took his rifle, came out, and said, I will shoot you right away if you don't go away. And they just went away and never appeared again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way. I'm not sure if that's a positive modem, but, but, but... I mean, that was 50 years ago, but it worked. Yes, but, uh, yeah, he created his own universe for sure. Yeah, so we, We're making history today. There's only two people who doesn't have the camera on. So, oh, hey! Wow. We welcome your cameras. Now learn to put your face in the middle of the screen, a little bit above, and just adjust your camera. And yes. um, welcome, Caitlin. You, I know you also have a camera. All right. I'm, um, I'm in a different place right now, so. <laughs> fine. Oh, your fine. your picture is great anyway. <laughs> Thank you. And your voice is nice. So. Today, our uh, first announcement, I had, you know, it was a rare occasion, I, I spoke to my daughter Nina, who is a hybrid, Pleiadian hybrid, a leader of human colonies, especially she works on Colony One, and she gave an update, which I didn't record, but I will just tell you what I remember, and it was pretty straightforward. The colonies are functioning again, hooray! Uh, everything seems to be back to normal. Uh, there are 87 people, two days ago, there were 87 people in the colonies, humans, visiting. Uh, uh, and altogether it was about 220 humans plus aliens. Uh, the Colony 1 is doing telepathy, Colony 2 is doing health, exercise, training, learning how to live. And I believe Crystal Room is Colony 2, but I'm not sure. And Crystal Room is some fancy room where you spend only a few minutes, up to 12 minutes, and then you become so euphoric that uh, you it could be harmful for some. But they said, I'm there, and I love this euphor being, being euphoric and being spaced out. Anyway. Uh, it's in Colony 1. Oh, Colony 1. All right. Na colony, colony 3 is doing the videos. Uh, of human interviewing humans and human interviewing aliens and Colony 4 is doing uh, channeling and uh, Nina said that telepathy is something that will be needed later but channeling is something which is needed now and then they they are focused on Colony 4 pretty much teaching people how to channel and teaching people I assume how to live with channeling um, and they had 10 people at that moment um, Nina was asked by someone close to me uh, whether what is the biggest challenge of humans in the colonies. That would be my typical question, right? And the answer was the challenge is, as usual, uh, remembering. And they said they do different tricks and things and technology to help people to remember, but very few remember and now they want us to remember so you know they and us we all want us to remember what had what happened in the COVID. so later to that I answered 
after the conversation that it looks like we are dealing with some sort of law of nature, the fundamental law of nature, which prevents us from getting inf information from out there. And Jim confirmed that that was Douglas and Joe and James in the colonies, they also suggested that. There is something fundamental there and we're dealing with that and we have to deal with that basically. As we are sent, this veil will uh, dissolve, but right now there is some sort of law of nature which prevents us from getting this information. They believe that <clears throat> that uh, the, the real-time experience when you transport to the ship will help that memory. You, it should be that you remember a lot more going in real time. But of course you won't be able to spend very much time there, maybe an hour or two at a time. But they figured that it would probably be more memorable to be there in uh, real time and in body and spirit and everything. So at this point the program mm -hmm. is 96 percent complete they will not start transporting until it is 100 percent because they are they do not want any safety issues or they do not want any issues at all uh, with the with uh, teleportation and uh, they have to to redesign their teleporters because human physiology is slightly different and if it's just a little bit off it can be dangerous so the vibration is involved in all kinds of things a lot of different things in our physiology in our vibration on just to make sure that everything's 100 percent they're not going to do any transporting until that is at 100 percent so but that shouldn't be too far if they're at 96 percent but they said they are working on it still and they will be giving us updates the good thing about the crystal room is that uh, almost everybody who's gone to the crystal room remember it, some bits of it. There's several people that remember the crystal room because the energy is so strong in there. Let me describe to you that if maybe uh, maybe some of you have a got a glimpse of it and um, don't remember, but there's different colors of lights in different areas of the room. Now these are chakra lights, these are healing lights, but they are in different parts and the, the stones that correlate with them and with that energy are with them. So you would have the red stones with the red lights, the green stones with the green lights and crystals, green crystals and all that. But the, there is a large crystal with the light shining through it. So um, you get to hold the crystals. Some of the crystals are large. Some of the s stones are small or whatever. They are in different sizes. But you go to where you are feeling that you resonate at that time. And some people end up with, with, the, the, with the green stones or the yellow stones or the whatever, the white stones. There's different areas of the room. And you can walk on the ceiling. So different sections are on the ceiling, some are on the sides of the walls. You can walk on all parts of the crystal room. So you can go wherever you want to go to whatever color that is drawing you at that time and that is the energy that you most need at that time. And you can only stay there like 15 minutes before you start uh, feel the energy makes you start to hallucinate. So they pull you out of the room before you start hallucinating too badly but the thing is about some of that is that some people like the hallucination and feeling so they stay a little bit longer and if it's safe they let you stay but um, that's how strong the energy is in there so it's really interesting so has anybody else that been to the crystal room that I haven't talked to about it Side of Maybe. I had an instance uh, this morning when I had this big white light orb just come ram straight into me and it just enveloped me in like white light and that was the only part of the dream that I remember. It was about 20 seconds long and it just shot me straight back into waking state. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I'll have to, 
we'll have to ask him what that was. I'm not sure what that was. Yeah. That could have been something from the crystal room because other people have had experiences where the crystal itself was resonating so strongly. They have it set up so that the crystals will resonate to their highest uh, vibration. So uh, some of the crystals are so strong they do cause like mental uh, zapping and things of that way, nature. And I think that's why some of us remember the crystal room. Uh, so well is because of the energy that was around us. I was there. Yay! I was there too. I was, Gabriel was there. Gabriel was holding a purple crystal. Oh yeah, I was too. I was there with purple too, Gabe. Yes. So you might have been in close proximity. I was talking to Takur in the crystal room. Um, she she had to sit down, and Justin was in the crystal room with me. He saw me there. Uh, so there are several people that have been to the crystal room. So interesting. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. It's really. There are no words to describe it. <laughs> Yeah, it's really quite an awesome room, and I think that's probably another reason why I remember it. It's so far removed from, from normality, because it's so beautiful and so different, it, it does sort of stick in your mind. But I thought it was a dream. You see, I, uh, I thought I was there in a dream talking to Takur, and there was crystals all around and lights and beautiful things, and somebody saw me there and said, were you at the crystal room on... On that night, and I was like, "Whoa!" I thought that was a dream, but it was not. I was actually <laughs> there. So I, I remember, I all remember the it very clearly. I remember it very clearly, and um, it was very cool. But I didn't think it was a actuality because I hadn't remembered anything from the colonies at all. So, all right, we'll uh, keep moving. So you mentioned that real time transfer. Just for those who don't know about it, basically. Uh, a human colony that work is the site where we volunteer to go to settlements of humans up there and when we go we remember a little bit but basically a few minutes here translate into hours and days there and that compression of time is not real time it's kind of time manipulation and most of the trips are spiritual projections or holographic projections so basically we do it at night and it looks like a dream to us. But now we want to remember that and they want us to remember so they develop new ways to transfer where it's like real time transfer. So you you go there again as a holographic projection but it's real time so there when you come back you should remember more because there is less time manipulation. So that was what was Jim talking about. Now, um, coming down to earth, I invite everybody for uh, to ask personal questions to Jim in private sessions. So private sessions, uh, you schedule with Jim uh, by going to the website, there is Jim menu there on the left, and there is Jim's email and Jim's Skype, schedule the session with him and uh, ask lots of personal questions. Here for the new members, we give an opportunity to ask personal questions right here. And uh, they kind of start to be trivial. So if you have to, you ask. But uh, keep in mind that it is watched by hundreds of people. And if you really want to have personal conversation with aliens, do a private session. But again, some, some questions are very important. And lots of people don't have money. So that is an opportunity for you to ask the questions for free. We invite the nations and thanks everybody. We got already, I announced like a day ago, uh, a collection for a hard drive to do backup of uh, our videos. It's like over 150 gigabytes. And uh, Slava and Danny are doing the backups. So uh, we already got the donations. Thanks everybody. It came very fast and we are, uh, it was very handy. Nice. We ask and the money come. Law of attraction. Yes. Uh huh. Um, so yes, personal questions are welcome. Also, keep in mind who you ask because you know uh, some like you, you don't ask angels about your 
percent of your hybrid DNA. You ask the cur about that, and you don't ask James from the colonies about that because he has to ask the cur what's his percent. I mean, it's just slow and it's kind of it just goes against the stream. But you know, if the cur is here, that would be very appropriate to ask her. We had a nice discussion with Disdu and Pentium and a few others about politics. I think that's very important. We have wars right now, and we want things to go right, and they turn to go go left. They go backwards. Uh, the Earth is sort of in, retro, in retrograde. It's it's weird. And last time I mentioned to Disdu, we need help. He said, you know, help yourself. He said, that's what he said. Why don't you do something? You humans have to do something. Why do why do you expect us to fix everything? That's he was his attitude. He was upset about human politicians, upset about grassroots. From his point of view, we have to do something. And this is a big discussion. That's you know forever discussion. I invite those who are dealing with this to discuss the procedures and processes. Uh, who is involved? What is possible to do? I have a lot of suggestions. And most of the suggestions involve the information coming from up there to down here. And apparently they are permitted to do channeling, but other ways to communicate the information like YouTube or direct messages to people don't work well. So, so there is a blockage here. So I want to discuss that. I guess most um, qualified for that would be, of course, this do Pentium. Yales, both Yales. The cur is pretty good for that. She knows stuff. But maybe they can also uh, connect us to someone who is planning their politics, who is planning their, how do you call it, work on the ground and communications with, uh, with the Earth. Something, I, I know they have that department. I don't, know, I don't know how it is called. But something like, Relationships with Earth politicians, relationships with Earth. Max. Financials, yes. Yes, like a, a liaison. Yeah, they should have a public figure to, yeah. Uh, yes. Press, press, how do you call this? The public relations person, yes, that they call public relations. So we would like to speak to public public relations person who, of those who deal on the ground. Uh, we already spoke with the alien from the Congress, but again, they're not permitted to interfere. They mostly just collect information. We want to speak to those who help, who do this stuff, and just see what they're doing because I think they're not doing enough. That's my understanding. And uh, the main argument is here, you know, we want more. We want to be more involved. We want to give ideas. And I don't think they have... Then they there is not enough in, enough involvement of light workers in what's happening on Earth right here. There is not enough involvement of light workers up there into what's happening right here. That's first invitation. Uh, <coughs> second is dolphins. I just recently watched listened to a radio lab show on dolphins, and we want to speak to them. Maybe dolphin collective or dolphin pack. Collective, Dolphin Tribe Collective, something like that. And I just watched Bashar's thing, Swimming with the Dolphins and th things of that nature. So that dolphins seem to be on the forefront right now. So, uh, and I wanted to say, forgive me for texting, but that's my friend who wants to go camping. And I and he wants to go, like, right now, and I can't. So, <laughs> so I have to communicate with him. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to channel while you're camping, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, it's possible, but it's hard. Yeah. Max. Yes. The, the dolphin energy is very connected to the Syrian energy. Yes, that's true. Yes. Uh, I now remember. Yeah. Um. Oh, there is tons of interesting stories about where they come from, how human they are. You know, are they humans? Are we related to them? That sort of thing. It's very interesting. And switching to the next invitation, um, the, I invite John Lennon to come and uh, briefly outline our project and uh, invite help. I think if you get help there with that little musical project, or medium-sized musical project, uh, uh, then <clears throat> it will move 
better. And after we finish channeling, we discuss more how everybody could help. That is the topic of today. Three topics of today. Yes. I didn't bring my drum today. <laughs> But I can play. I can play. Uh, I can play some music on my phone. Oh, you have full music. I I have a guitar on my phone. It's my new toy. I love it. All right. So you can go, and I will play with my toy. Okay. Um. Yeah. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. Bye. I don't know who's coming first. I have no idea. This is John. Welcome, John. Thank you for replying to the invitation. I decided that if we need to speed it up, we need to make it a little more public. If you don't mind. Do you think that's wise? What, what I think uh, we can get a little help here and there. You want it faster, so yes, we have a community, yes. that sort of thing. Well, all right. Um, I've given a download of music here, but it's and it is in reality now, but it's not complete. The drum beats are not right. The background music is not as I want it to be. The the, the notes are there, but not the sound. Yes. Um, the vibration is a little different. Yes, it's a, it's not as I want it to be. Why don't you explain why is it so urgent? Why why is the hurry? I think that's the main. Rationale. Well, I'm coming back. I'm going to be reincarnated, and I'm going to want this released beforehand. There is a reason for it. I cannot tell you exactly what that is, but I know the outcome of the release of it, and that is important to many people in the world, and some very close to me. I told them that I would do this. I guess not everybody knows that when you incarnate back that you forget everything. Well, you come back, well, all right, do you remember before your life anything without past life regressions? I don't think so. So you don't remember anything until you are supposed to remember. And some of the, some people don't remember at all anything because they don't get past life regressions or don't believe in it or do not believe that this life is um, meant for a teaching of some sort.
But they will remember before they die something that will give them a clue to who they were and what they're to do and what they were supposed to do or what they are doing now. Does that make sense to you? A little bit. You're kind of mumbling. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know how to explain it as well as the ascended masters, but um, I, I'm just being myself. Thank you. I just have to do this for myself and some others. So what? So when you are coming back, you won't be there anymore, right? I will be there in many ways, but I won't remember who I was until I get a past life regression or are reminded by someone else. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I guess, I mean, I, we already kind of, I already know this story, so... But when I hear the song, well, the song is plural, it's 16 minutes long at this point. Um, it's a 16 minute long medley of songs. When I hear it, I will know that it, it's connected to me some way. I guess I invite everybody to speak. Um, I already asked a lot of questions to John and it's all recorded. I will publish it at some point, so I don't want to ask him again the same thing. But uh, you can ask now. Hi, I John. This is Rowie. Hi, John. Rowie, Rowie goes. Hi, Rowie. Hi, John. It's a pleasure yes. to meet your acquaintance again. Um, I was interested in some of the music you shared with me, and I was interested you had an idea of what key you wanted the music or the atmospherics to be in. Actually, the key is okay, but, I mean, you can change the key as long as the notes are remain. Uh, I wouldn't uh -huh. move it higher or else he would not be able to sing it. But uh, the key is okay. The problem with it is it needs a George Martin treatment, which no one around here is George Martin. Only George Martin can really actually treat it the way I want it to be treated. However, I believe Jim can actually do a much better job with the information in his brain than anybody else can hear. Um, mm -hmm. because he can actually hear what I have in mind, but it's very hard to find that sound or the way to record that. He would have to know a lot more. So that is my concern. But I'm looking for people that might be able to help with the lower drum sounds as the Beatles did in something or... Uh, the End, the drum sounds in The End, remember from Abbey Road. Those are both songs from Abbey Road. And I absolutely adore the songs from Abbey Road and the, the drum sounds. He was using a, a bassier sounding drum, uh, a more, a very t beautiful tone in the drums. So uh -huh. I'm looking for that sound in my drums, in the drums for this song. These songs. I have something that can replicate that those sounds uh, electronically. Um, yeah, very good. Uh, this can be worked on. Um, and I will give you an idea. You should actually... I will have Jim set up a meeting with you so you can discuss it. Okay, and if you want to download anything to me, I am open and ready to receive anything from you. Yes. I, if possible. The whole download is in Jim. I to be to do the same download in you would be okay if you can receive it all. I know he received it all. I'm I'm hoping you could receive it all. Um, I would like you to hear the first five arrangements before you get the download, and then you can when the download comes. You can see where it needs changed. Uh huh. Yeah, Does I'm pretty good with beats you? and drums, so um, I'm very. I'm going to be very particular on this piece of music for many reasons, and I do like some of the things that are there already, but I do don't like the drum beat. I do like the background soft sound of 
the uh, stringy sound, but I don't like the lead stringy sound as much as as I would like it to be a little bit more subdued. But these are things that uh, I can't really explain to you. Yeah, it's not easy being a perfectionist with music. Yes, because the sound, it's not only the the quality of the sound, it's the production that makes the the song viable. Well, thanks for explaining that. That gives us something to help us give an idea of what we can and work on. Forgive me, I, do, I prefer not to use the accent today. I know some don't believe unless you use the accent. However, I'm being straightforward. Nice, thank you, nice. Uh, Danny? Thank you. Oh, Dan, Dan. Yeah, um, I have a question. Dan. We have another Dan. Hello, Jim. Yeah. And hello, John. Hello, Max. Um, I have a question relating hello. to your, your process of downloading the music into Jim so that you yeah. can remember at a different time when you reincarnate. Um, yeah. That concept actually fascinates me. Um, there's been a lot of movies and um, books that have been based around that idea. Yes. So I was wondering, is it possible that we may have done that, if we are musically inclined, we may have actually done that for ourselves before we appeared here in this form? Yes. It's been done before, but not on this scale. The song is going to be 16 minutes long, and there will be parts of it that will re resonate with different people. <laughs> And different people, because it has five different parts, um, it will resonate with five, well, four different people, actually, because the first part and the last part have very similar, are very similar. But um, four different people will resonate and know that it's me. Okay, wonderful. And one of those is Yoko. Uh, anybody else has anything to ask or say? When will you, what year will you reincarnate them here on Earth? That's not for you to know. Okay. It's not a polite answer, right? Well, it is not, it is not for anyone to know. Uh, you are speaking a different language now. I mean, the spirits always answer like that, right? But, yes. But the polite answer would be, unfortunately, I cannot disclose it right now. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately, I cannot disclose it right now. <laughs> Thank you. So, why are you coming back? Uh, you didn't finish your cycle of reincarnations? There are reasons why I must come back uh, as someone else to learn something different than I had learned before. But how did you do as John Lennon? Uh, did you do okay? Did they like how you ended up doing the life? My life was cut short as John Lennon, um, so I did not finish John Lennon's life. It was not meant to be that I should have died when I did, but I will definitely but whatever life. you accomplished, did uh, your judges or whatever, uh, your... I made several mistakes. You made mistakes? Oh, yes. I know, I know. All right. But, you know, but you made so much impact on the whole earth. Did yes. they appreciate that? Yes. But as a personal spirit, you didn't accomplish what you were meant to do, right? Correct. Can you just close at least part what was wrong? Um, I became, the, I went through different phases in my fame. One was total, total egotism. One was letting go of total e egotism. And the other was uh, the spiritual aspects of what, what fame teaches you about the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually within the last few years I had been learning so much about what the spirit was trying to teach me through my fame. So you, you got songs like Imagine mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And um, mind, 
um, you know, number nine dream and things like that. So um, you will know that when I finish this piece with whoever is going to help me here. Yes. Um, it will be a hopefully the masterpiece that I intended it to be. But uh, can I go ahead? Go ahead. Um, John, uh, this is Sabrina. Hi. Hi. Um, can you give us a little background into um the song Imagine? Imagine is exactly as it is. If you listen to it, you will get exactly the meaning. It. We're controlled on Earth. When you come to Earth, you are controlled by everything in the Earth. Everything around you helps to control you. I did not know how to make my own universe, by the way. I did not know how to do that. So I was controlled by all the effects of everything around me. And the song Imagine came to me as an inspiration because everything around me didn't matter anymore. It was just love, peace, unity, and when you look at life in that perspective, then things change. Okay. So it came, it came out of love, not out of rejecting... Well, I was always... Or was it? I was always a bit of an anarchist, as you know, so um, it came out of that as well, but the thing is, it didn't come, that didn't come from my anarchist side, it came from my feeling the spirit and knowing the spirit side, because I was not trying to destroy anything, I was trying to create a feeling of love and unity between mankind. Yes, and we got that in the song. Thank you. I yeah. really love that song. It's it's one of my favorites because of the message. Uh, I have another thing is like don't don't be offended. I mean it very positively. When I speak to you as a spirit, I discovered your business side. You're very pushy as a business person. Yes. Uh, how do you look at it? Is it something you would make more softer, make softer in the future lives, or that is what you like about yourself? No, actually, I had to be very pushy in the life that I was in as a Beatle, yeah. because Paul was a v even more pushy than me. Uh huh. Paul and I were at. Um, many times at opposite ends of the, the spectrum mm -hmm. because of how we felt about things. And I could understand his side, but yet he would not give in to anything that I had to say in, in some senses. Mm -hmm. Because he, he had the vision, I had a vision. You can't have two different visions and put them into one without a lot of problems. Yes. So as you see, he's prolific. Yes, yes. And he's a genius, but he's also the most stubborn man I've ever met. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very productive, at least in the most part of, you know, whatever you did, you did a lot, and it was wonderful. Well, usually uh, the producer, George, would have to come in and say, you know, this idea is great, this idea, let's merge these two ideas together, and that can be something else, and this can be something else. And actually, he would pull things together from both of us uh -huh. and make it into something sensible that we both liked because we respected him a great deal. But not always, we were not always satisfied. But in the, in the end result, it was acceptable. Drugs. Um, you have been asked during life many times about that, but as a spirit, not very often. Uh, when you look back on your life, how do you see the drug and the effects of that? Was it something that was helpful to your spiritual development or otherwise? 
Well, there's so many perspectives on how to look at that. You could say that drugs were actually creative in some instances, but they were also very destructive in others. So the use of drugs has to be controlled. It has to be in a controlled environment. If the environment's too loose, it's, it's not good. Uh, do you mean controlled by government or controlled by friends? Uh, the, uh, there is a song with the help of my friends, right? No, not by government. Um, I, I was never controlled by government in the drugs except for being arrested. But, um, no, what I'm talking about is the atmosphere has to be right for drug use. Uh, it, we never used it as a, a pure spiritual awakening. However, it actually happened that way a couple times. I totally agree. If I even meditate, I make sure the doors are closed. Anybody in house knows that I go to meditate and try to not to disturb me. Same thing with the, you know, any drugs. You become less protected, so your body, whatever it remains, has to be protected. So your friends help to help you, have to help you, right? Yes. Um, and now we have among our community people who have problems with drugs and luckily who quit drugs, can you give any advice to them? That's a good question because I never ever really stopped doing drugs uh, completely. I did cut down, <clears throat> but I never really stopped. And you know, it does alter perception and it does alter feelings and emotions. And sometimes it was not good for me because I would be careless with my emotions toward the people that I love. And I would say things that I really shouldn't have. And I would feel things that weren't really my true self. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. But I have to say that I tried to be the best that I could. But as you know, the word try doesn't always work. Because you move back into a cycle of who you were, pre who you thought think you are sometimes instead of who you really are. Did drugs open you to some negative entities, spiritual beings which harmed you? No, not, I don't. Looking back, I wasn't aware of anything like that because I wasn't really aware of entities and things of that nature affecting my life. I, w I felt more powerful than entities in some ways and and I felt that if there were any entities, they helped me to get where I was. So I wasn't afraid of anything like that. I look at you, at your photographs and videos, and it felt like you were very sturdy, you were very protected, you were very strong in a way like drugs. You know, if other people would use drugs as you did, they would be really harmed. And you kind of went out unharmed. Yes. In that sense, you're right. I was unharmed. I did party like a crazy person sometimes, but um, it was all in good fun, and I didn't mean to hurt anybody, although I did hurt some people very much, And I, but I did not mean to. My intention, I guess, I didn't have an intention. My intention was to have a good time, but I ended up hurting people sometimes when I was having a good time. And that was, and I remained strong with that, but I, I didn't realize that I hurt them at first. So uh, I tried to make up things, make things up to people as I could. But I was very drawn to the spirituality in most people. As I was drawn, that's why Yoko and I got together, is because of her positive spiritual attitude. Do you, do you realize that? Yes, I had a question. Hello, John. This is Brian. Yes. Hi. Yes, uh, my question was, um, yeah, what drew you to the spirituality, that, that uh, going off and having a retreat in that spiritual nature? Was it through your music? Did the music inspire you? It was everything around me. Um, you relate to everything around you and sometimes some things become stronger than others at moments. My music was very strong always. 
my my thoughts about the music were very strong always. My love for Yoko was very strong always. And my love for my children was very strong, although I have to say I made some very big mistakes with Julian um, that I did not make with Sean. And I'm that, uh, although I'm in spirit form, sometimes that comes to me and I have to move it away because it was a very, uh, I harmed him a great deal in things that I said. Do you see from the spirit, can you see in the past how you were helped by spirits and angels? Can you see it now? I can see that now, yes, to a certain extent. I, I am not really looking at that life now. You have brought that to me to look at today. Ah. But I haven't looked at it in many years in your time. But I because I've been looking at the future moving forward, I really don't look to the past much anymore because the lessons that I learned there have already become part of me. And the things from the past that are chaff, so to speak, that are nothing, are already gone. But I can tell you that it was a wonderful life in many ways. And, and though many people think that celebrities don't feel any pain, we definitely do. And money is not everything. And uh, in fact, it becomes, you take it for granted. Of course, you understand. You take money for granted, and it becomes... It actually makes you feel powerful in some ways because you would want for nothing. If you want something, you can get it. However, it is painful if you use it in a way that is not good and if you deny it to people that should have it. I'm not sure you'll ever understand that, but there were situations where I denied it to people that should should have had some. I understand. I understand. Yeah, you were a businessman in a way, a very good one. Yeah. Why did Why did you wrote Yellow Sky? Yellow Sky? No, Yellow Sky. I think it's called. Uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. That was a that was an acid trip song, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yellow sky. No, yellow sky, not sky. I am not sure I'm here. Gabriel, uh, chat but, with someone on the, on the chat, and they will help you to identify the song, and then uh, we have it. Do, it doesn't matter. We can continue. Uh, I wanted to ask about Ellen Ginsberg. I was very impressed about your contacts with him. Uh, he all, he was also very resistant to drugs. He used drugs, but they didn't harm him as much as other people. He used them solely for uh, opening the mind's eye and spiritual reasons. That is all. He did not feel the joy and the understanding that uh, recreate of recreational drugs and. In fact, he did not even enjoy using the drugs when he used them. They made him uncomfortable. However, once he got into the spiritual realm and into the opening of the eye, then he was fine, but that's all he would use drugs for. And yet, uh, we, we did do drugs together. And it was two different experiences because we were two different people, of course, but we had two different ideas how they would affect us. And that is very important with drug use as well. How, it, how we picture that the drug is going to affect us. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, yes. And his picture of how it... He, was, he set up protections to not be affected in a in a bad way so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his was more eye-opening experience a more eye-opening experience than mine because that was his he intended it to be he intended it and therefore his perception of me changed 
when he was doing drugs as well. And he actually liked me better in some ways because I was uninhibited by the world around me. And that's what he wanted to see. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see the uninhibited John. He wanted to see the playful energies in me. Mm -hmm. And um, he got what he wanted. He left much later than you did. Uh, did you meet him up there? Yes, we've spoken. Oh, just spoken. But we we are connected in many ways. I still, I mean, I don't have to speak to him to be connected to him and and his spirit. You will understand when you become spirit that we are connected. And if all we have to do is think about one another in spirit, and we're connected. So it's I can feel his energy at any time that I want. To me, you you and him are like very high spirits who went through life guided and very were very influential on people and the world around you was very different. You kind of created you transformed the world in a big way. Yes. So I thought that you are related in some way and guided in some way together. Well, I did not know that I was creating my own universe. I didn't know how to do that uh, consciously, but subconsciously I did. Um, once we fell into our universe, we created everything around it because we were so positive mm -hmm. about where we were moving. And we were so sure about our talents. And we were so sure about everything that we were doing. It just came out so well. And it was effortless in some ways. Do you understand? That? Yes, yes, yes. It, it became effortless to write a wonderful standard song that everybody would love because the melodies just were from the heart and from the soul and from the mind. Now, when you talk about Ginsburg and I, his Creativity was also from the heart, the soul, and the mind in a different realm mm -hmm. of experience and understanding. And so when we met, we united, but yet crash, clashed at the same time. You will have to understand that I did not understand his reality at all in some ways. Because I, I, I said to him, I couldn't live the way you live. Of course. I can't li and he said I couldn't live the way you live. Mm -hmm. And we agreed to disagree on many things, but yet found it relevant within our personalities that we were the way that we were. He could not have been successful without the degree of understanding of what he did to the perfection that he did it. And I the same way. I could not have done what I did without the understanding of that atmosphere around me that helped me become who I was and sustained me. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, Dan, yes. Max, Dan has a question. Yes. I know if, if you're still carrying on, I'd, I'd love to hear the rest of, rest of what you're saying and then I'll, I'll come in when, when there's a free moment. That's okay, I'm fine. You can speak. Okay, wonderful. Um, if you were to sum up your life as John Lennon in one in a brief sentence or as however however many words did you wish, uh, what would it be? The most loving anarchist that ever lived, other than Gandhi. <laughs> no, actually, I was a loving anarchist because I did not follow the concepts of society, and yet I lived in the society very well. But yet, on the other hand, I was enlightened toward the end there about what spirit wanted me to know. Does that make sense? And I loved everyone. And I could love everyone doing nothing, and I could love everyone doing many things. Does that make sense? That was wonderful. Thank you very much, Sean. You're welcome. Any more questions? I, I have a question. I just would go a second if you go. I have one more question. Yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead, Caroline, if you have a question. 
Yeah. Hi, John. Hello. Hi, it's Caroline. Um, I just wondered, actually, if um, you could do your life as John Len Lennon again, what would you do differently? That is a very good question because I don't think I would do anything differently. Um, they, you say that you would when you go back, but in spirit, I can see as I, as I was moving forward as John Lennon, I had a good reason to do everything that I did the way I did it. And although some of those reasons were not right, at the time, they seemed right. At the time, they seemed like the best mm. thing to do and the right answers. But, of course, they weren't. But you know what? If I were going to live it all over again, I would probably make the same mistakes. And that sounds sad, but it's not really. Do you know why? Because I learned many things from those mistakes that I could not have learned without making them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you continue to live, if you allow to continue to live, uh, how would you now estimate the projection of your life? What would happen next? The the next thing that I w that was going to happen pretty much is that we were discussing not do doing music anymore for a while and living a very peaceful life and actually giving some money to special things and becoming more earth and earthly but you see that was not meant to be right now but um, when I met Yoko she was an artist I, m I met her and at the top of a doorway I stood on a ladder and saw one of her pieces of art. Does anyone know this story? Yes. The very first thing in tiny letters it said yes. And you know that hit me so hard. It hit me because yes is positive. It could have been no. But we had been discussing our spirituality, our love, for different things in art and when I went up and saw Yes I instantly was in love with who she was as a person. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very deep. So I resonated so well with that that I saw a Yes in every single one of her paintings and works of art so it was all Yes. It was all yes. Do you miss being with her? Yes. And she misses me as well. Every now and then she'll think about something and we'll connect. <laughs> she was my soul mate. Yeah, we can still feel that energy. Um, yes, I feel much love for her even now. Um, when I come back to come and see the human forms and things, yes, our relationship uh, mentally and physically was of an, of a a higher standard, definitely. May I ask a, qu a follow up question? Sure. How will Oko and Julian feel about the music once it's released? I believe they will understand what I'm saying. There is my form of apology to Julian in song number three called Fly. Yeah, he made a very moving song called Salt Water back in the 90s and yes. it was a very touching song for me. It even made me cry when I was a child. Yes. Yes. He's gifted. But he let negativity get in, in there and I won't discuss it. Thank John, you. Can, can I ask? Oh, I'm sorry, Roy, I thought you were done. Go ahead. 
I just said thank you. You go ahead, Sabrina or Max. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the spirit realm? Like, what what goes on there? What do you do? Do, do you learn more while you're there, or do you reflect on your life? Yeah. That sort of thing. Well, I don't reflect on my life, but I plan future lives. And I also, you all experience what it's like to be a spirit, which you could not possibly know. Um, but in song number four, still at the end of the line, on, in my, in my uh, download, it tells you a little bit what it's like. Um, I'll, I'll repeat some of the words. When life was new on the other side, I sped right through, eyes open wide. When stars appear inside your mind and burst in two, then you will find you're still at the end of the line. A million years in time and all of them mine. When you're in spirit, there is no time. You're forever. And to experience the feeling that you're never going to be gone, you're never going to leave, nothing ever can harm you in spirit, is a feeling that you do not know yet. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot even explain it. It's, it's not, it's not, there's not words to explain explain what the spirit is like the spiritual world is like it's it's beyond your imagination and beyond what you've ever thought it could be yeah cuz i i i often wonder about that of what actually it's you happening will free, you will be free to create or not to create or to think of the future or not think of the future or to develop another part of your spiritual aspects because every part of every part of creativity is within you in the spirit. Do you understand that? Yes. And you bring certain parts of that back into the world. You bring it all back actually, but you only develop certain parts of it because you there's no way you could develop all of it. Would you say that the personality stays the same or does it change? Do you when you do you it's, realize things that you didn't while you were here? All right, let me put it this way. It's the same base. The same base energy that you always had. The same spiritual energy you always, always had that is different from everybody else in the universe. But yet, when you're building on that base, sometimes it can change. Depending on what part of that base you bring forward into the human existence. But you are there. Your, your essence is the base. And then you it's like planting a seed. You know you plant a zinnia seed or you plant a morning glory seed, but sometimes it grows well, sometimes it doesn't grow well, sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's yellow. It's it can be changed by the way that you perceive it when you're growing. Okay, thank you. Anybody? I have a question, but I would uh, wait. Uh, the guidance. I felt that you have been guided and uh, protected a lot. Was, it, was. was it your mother's spirit who did that? It was the spirit of several people, not just one. But yes, my mother was one of them. But in order to be and learn what I learned at that time, I had to be protected. And even when I lost my life, I was still protected. But they could not stop that. He was too strong in the sense that his conviction that he was doing the right thing was so strong they could not stop him. If they could get to him in a way that 
made him feel like he was doing the wrong thing, he would have been stopped. But they could not do that. He felt totally and completely right in what he did. I'm pretty sure he was programmed by uh, secret military. Uh, when he spoke later, he said that he heard a voice in his head, go and kill him. I thought it was kind of mind control technology. Um, I am not allowed to say anything more about that. Interesting. Interesting. But I must go now. Is there any more last questions? Forgive me for not using the English accent. It just is, is inappropriate, I think, to be... To, because I don't use it in spirit anymore. I just don't use it now. John, just one more question that um, um, Zenaida would like to know. Yeah. Um, if you know anything about soulmates, uh, do they really... Um, like their connection and that kind of thing. She, she would like to know if you know anything about that. Yes, I, I also wanted to ask the same question, yes. Soulmates actually do connect chakras in some ways. Not like the telepathic chakra. Not like the way that, <laughs> that a, a telepath would connect chakras. However, on every level of your being, you connect in some way. Of course, there will be disagreements in times when you're not actually connected, but you will know, you will pretty much know a soulmate by your connection with them. It is strong, it is positive, and it is passionate. Um, are soulmates predetermined, or it is something of a choice, you kind of become soulmates, like you become human mates, you become soulmates. It can happen in many different ways. The way that, you, like I was saying, the way that the plant grows, the base is always there. But sometimes you grow apart and sometimes you grow together. Soulmates, as they grow, grow in their life, grow together. I, that's how I s can explain it the best. It's not a very good explanation, really, but it is an honest one. You, you, when you meet, you feel all the connections and you grow together immediately. It's like branches entangling one another almost immediately. But how much is a personal choice is involved? Is it a choice to become soulmate or it is predetermined? That I won't tell you because um, you have more than one soulmate. You could be a soulmate with more than one person. And now let me tell you why. Because when the branch is entangled, things change within both of you. And some soulmates are closer than others. Yoko and I, as soulmates, were very, very close. Was Paul a soulmate? Paul was a, a mate um, in the sense that he was a good guy. He was a, but we weren't soulmates, but we were creative channels that linked together in a way that was almost beyond belief. I believe you're, um, it's easy for you to come. It seems to be very easy, and you speak very easily. But I think the impact which you're making by this pub first public appearance and first answering public questions, I think is huge because of your past life, of your life as John Lennon. <clears throat> so I would invite you to come as often as possible and uh, let's continue yeah. that conversation. I think it would be very helpful, not only, it will help you to publish the songs, also it will help the humanity. Well, I wanted to say something too. There are people out there that will say, that's not John Lennon. But you know what? It is because I lived my life and I saw it from my perspective and I, my perspective is different than theirs. And they may not have seen me as I am telling you, but believe me, as I am telling you, I could have an attitude. There is no question that I was cocky at times and would tell people to bugger off and things of that nature. But I am who I am, and I see who I was. In uh, I will explain one more thing. Uh, when I see you speaking, 
through gym. I recognize lots of gym in you, lots of gym, like 40% of gym. But one thing that gym doesn't do, it doesn't bend to microphone. And you do, because that's your professional instinct. Ah. So I see when, when Jim kneels to microphone, that's John Lennon. <laughs> uh, I, see. I see. It's just a habit. Yes. Yes. Thank but you very much. Yeah, a habit of humanity, yes. Sonida sends her love, and she says she invites you to uh, come in her dreams if you would like. That is fine. I come. I can come, but only on certain occasions. I can't explain that, but I can come on certain occasions when the mind is ready for the information that I would give. I think you should have certain rules that you have to be very beneficial. Your appearance have to be not vain. It has to be very beneficial for the soul, right? No. Yes. Well, it has to be beneficial for everything. Yes. Yes. So, um. Have a great day. I'm. I am going to leave. And you see, forty percent of Jim. Where's forty percent of Jim? Maybe the voice. Much love, John. Thank you <laughs> Thank for your you. love and your music. Thank you. Much love to you. Thank you, you will John. Know it is me by the, you will know it is me by the music that comes. We look forward yes. to it, John. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure to okay. Much love. Thank you. I just go ahead. One last glance at those faces. Oh, I can show the faces to you. Just a second. Show your faces. It's Brian. That's uh, Caroline. Gabriel. Um, Caitlin. Uh, Kim. Kim, 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 Kim. Yeah, that would be Kim. That would be just a picture, and that's another picture. <laughs> and that's, I think, real Sabrina. It's our Bar Barbara. Hello. Okay. Very good. I just wanted to see the faces that I was talking to. Thank you. Bye bye. Farewell for now. Farewell. Jim. Hey. Hello, Jim. Hi, Hi. how are you? Yes. Going to start calling you JJ next. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to leave for a moment. Excuse me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank that you. was wonderful. Oh, we made it. We did it. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, uh, I wanted to say something about Jim. Yes, yes. Now, a practical part. I. So John gave us that uh, thingy. Now give us your money. Uh, basically, the logic here is that Jim is somehow an old generation. An old generation guy. All right. And um, he, when it comes to planning his time, he, uh, writing, recording music for John is last priority for Jim. He would do. Healing because he is a healer. He would do channel because he is a channeler. But music for him is fun, and he doesn't record music uh, because you know he he wants to work, and work for him is like healing and channeling and doing the sessions, especially because sessions pay most, and uh, music doesn't pay for him, which is just some sort of a disconnection, logical disconnection. So we need him to get on that. Uh, and so every time now when you speak to Jim, you have to ask. 
Now, how is your music project going? John needs that. We all, we everybody, we owe that to John. You know, we need. You know, he gave us so many presents. Uh, he transformed the world. He gave us his music. Now we owe him to record it and may help him to get it out. That's the point. Um, I don't know how to do the donations towards the music project, but uh, you know, come with ideas. Let's do some sort of donation so Jim is paid to do that work, or at least is supported to do his work. Then he would be much more uh, ready to do that because he kind of just you know does it once a week for a couple hours and that's done. I, I will do as much as possible, but I cannot do it for Jim. Uh, let's then do some sort of uh, creative group. I guess Ravi and Jaguar uh, are most qualified, but any musicians who hear us who can help with that, maybe they can get a bit Jim and help us to assemble this. It's pretty easy. We did the first round of recording. We recorded everything, but the drum is a nightmare. It's kind of the bumps, 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 bumps. It's not Beatles sound. And um, now we need to re-record everything, or to, which is much more complex, is to take the recording and replace the track with drums with the proper drums, which John wants, and which I don't even know what he wants. On the he knows and uh, Jim knows. So that's a fun project. We have done that, uh, the, but you know, it won't be released until it's perfect. Yeah. Then, then it also has a musical back background. Um, Wonderful. I don't know. Yes, go help like, Jim, and I will help as much as possible. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much he's willing to volunteer, but uh, you know, talk. I guess talk to him and see. Yeah, I let's, can let's have some sort of uh, get-togethers, and uh, I guess speaking on the phone is perfect. Just call Jim, call Jim, and uh, talk to him through Skype, through phone, and uh, Jim, I think, can sing something and. If you are technical, you possibly can play through Skype or through phone, whatever you create, and then basically it's like interactive process. As Jim says, "I want that boom, boom, whatever, dum, 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 dum," and you go and create it and send it back to Jim and say, "How about that?" And Jim says, "And you know, Jim is technically not that advanced, so if you send it just as MP3 file, I don't know if he is able to listen. Maybe he can." So it has to be interactive process. You, the easiest is just to play to him through Skype or through phone, and Jim would listen and say, you know, change it this way or this way, and I want it here, like some whatever, some sort of drumming effect, blah blah blah, and uh, and then uh, they will make it. Everything else is nice. pretty decent. Yes, but don't expect a uh, super different. Technologies there. It's it's earth music. It's done through Jim. It's earth instruments, earth voice, and it is pretty much John Lennon. But it is, I would disclose, it's a mellow John Lennon. It's it's not screaming. It's mellow John Lennon, and it's you know when when you hear it, it you understand it's, it. It is what it's was supposed to be. It is very. It places right there. It has a message there, and the message is delivered as John Lennon will deliver. Max, I have a question for you. Hey. Um, the time scale on this project. Um, what exactly are we um, it's looking towards? We it's a secret. He doesn't tell us. I think um, he says he has another thirty songs. I would love to get all oh, thirty wow. recorded, but you know, until these first five songs are completed, he won't give us any more. So the time scale as soon as possible, without killing Jim. That sort of thing. I would <laughs> I would think that you know uh, if if there is energy, uh, I would love to get all thirty. You know, five plus thirty. I would love to get all of them. You know, he keeps writing, and uh, I would love to hear all of that. Uh, what I think we all should do is listen to John Lennon after he became John Lennon without Beatles. I think that is very educational. He evolved in many ways. And he tried this and then that, and you know, just immersing yourself in John Lennon would help the project. Attention is important, you know, you know just uh, just you know, paying attention to what is that. For me, it is a, you know, it, 
it was a big. I was so happy. I was. Uh, I cried when I listened the first uh, first time Jim sang it. Just the fact, you know, I'm I, I'm in love with the uh, Abbey Road album and uh, White album and uh, and uh, the whole idea of Beatles. I was born in '64, you know, and that's the time when Beatles transformed the world. Well, I'll be happy to help come and work on it when I visit uh, next year. That would be, but I don't know, like I said, the time scale of uh, when it wants to be released or when it we wants are, to get. We are dragging it for about a month. If yeah, he wants it to go faster. He wants he wants the pro to move faster project so that he's sure that it'll be perfect before he leaves Spirit World. Well, he'll never leave Spirit World, but it goes into the real world or whatever you want to say. Yeah, it changes his mode in Spirit World, whatever. Uh -huh. Dives. Before diving. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rowley, how many songs have you heard from the, the five? I've just heard the one. Oh, just I'm one. coming back. The very first. Very I, I, I uploaded three. So just go there in the folder and listen. Oh, there's yeah. more in there. Ah, okay. Um, oh, Thank so the, the first three songs, well, all the songs are in reality as songs. They're just not produced properly. And not the drum beats yes. are not even close to what they should be. But um, And that's one thing he says. He wants me to run it, write a drum program. That's not so easy. For a 16-minute song, so I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's that's um, pretty tricky. Yes, that's real tricky because you almost have to write the drum track first and then play it over top. So, but he has something that he's going to teach me when I go down there. So. Okay, but, well, keep motivated and keep with it. Yeah, because it's <laughs> really going to be. You have to be very. You have to be very. Uh, as much as the songs change, there's probably several. Very. There's a lot of chord changes in this, so um, <laughs> it makes it difficult to write a drum track for all that because I I can hear that he wants different drums in different places, and it's not the same even all the way through one song. So. It's interesting. But the yeah, end result should be beautiful. It should be, yes. If it's up to him, it won't come out until it's perfect or very near perfect. <laughs> huh? How do you plan to release it? Um, he said he would discuss that when it gets closer to ready, but he, he does want to release it, yes. Jim, uh, does he want something like Ringo's drumming? He wants. He would love Ringo's drumming, but he knows that I have no connection to Ringo. Okay. Thanks. I, uh, I, if, if, and uh, who knows what Ringo's doing right now? I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Ringo is. Uh, yeah, Ringo is. Um, I researched Ringo even before I started speaking to Jim. Uh, Ringo is a genius in a in a way. Um, he's a. a, a how do you pronounce it? Libra? Libra? Libra. He's a Libra. He's a Libra. And the quality of Libra is he wants everybody to be together. He is kind of that glue which he he was a glue that kept Beatles together. For him it was, I guess, the highest priority for everybody to be together as a company. And you know, remember uh, he got he lost his voice and uh, he was sick. In the first one of the first trips of Beatles, you know, they went around the globe, flying to different countries like Japan and stuff. And he was just sick; he couldn't even move, you know. And as soon as he could get out of the bed, he would flew and catch them up. I think in in Japan because he was afraid they will replace him with another drummer. He understood that he's not as a genius as you know these two geniuses, but he really, really, really wanted to be there. And as a 
businessman, he was way better businessman than than uh, any any of three of them. They were spiritual, creative, and he whatever he earned, he invested, and invested very successfully. So he at some point he became richer than any one of the Beatles. They kind of wasted their money, and he kept it going up. But he still his talent of bringing people together. Now he collects all the guys, rock stars from the Beatles era, and they travel around the world giving joint concerts. It's amazing. They see also this old gentleman, and they look pretty good, but they kind of, whatever they are, they they still do what they, what they love to do. They sing. They come and they make concerts. That's amazing. People. Yes. I didn't He's realize great. that. That's so cool. I'm going to have to yes. Google that. Yeah. Ringo's <laughs> all-star band has Jeff Lynn and a lot of really very very Eric Clapton traveled with him at one time. Oh wow! Um, who else? There was several several really big stars that he just traveled around with, and it was called Ringo's All Star Band. And uh, oh, wow. would do his set, and then he would have people do other stuff. And it, actually, he's yeah. good. I bet. Yeah, I'm going to look for that one. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Ringo's All Star Band. All right. So who's to say that that the connection can be made with Ringo? Um, well, I don't know how to make it, but I've been praying about it. If he's to if he's to be here with us, that's wonderful. Well, I'm creating that universe with him in it, and with Paul McCartney as well, because Paul would know what John likes as well. And they're the only two living Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can okay. do that in my world. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's something for all of us to uh, to think about, yeah. to manifest, to help yeah, you manifest. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yes. Yeah, so Rowie, you've heard the first song, and it's uh, it's very catchy. It's very John Lennon. Uh, don't you think? Yeah, it's fantastic. I even had it singing through my head while I was doing dishes and stuff like that the other day. So, yeah. yeah. The whole thing, the, the thing about this 16-minute uh, piece of music or five songs or whatever is that at different times, different parts of it just run through your head constantly, constantly. I think uh, even Max has experienced that, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that parts of it just go through your head and won't stop. And I think maybe that's John's way of uh, pushing me because it's very beautiful and catchy and I couldn't take credit for it if I tried. So um, that's the other thing. <laughs> it's a piece of, it's a it's a work of genius, it really is. But it's not, it's not screaming, it's not like, you know, popular Beatles songs, it's more like, more mellow. So don't expect anything from the first time you hear it because you might get disappointed but eventually you know it's just uh, something that I don't think anybody did anything like that before coming yeah, from other can, side you can hear you can hear a John Lennon in it oh yes coming from oh. other side from oh, the yeah, spirit Sabrina side heard, Sabrina heard parts of it ah yeah Yes, I, I played it to her, yes. Well, I played it downstairs on the keyboard. Yeah. So, parts of it. But I guess describing it in advance is not is not a very good idea because, you know, how can you describe music? I, I would just want to lower your expectation. Don't expect something. Uh, it's not the way it is. It's not in the music what it is. It is in the message what it is. Uh, it's higher dimensional uh -huh. message in a very plain music. How, how about that? It, it's played yeah. with 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 Jim's hands and uh, on a oh yeah it's, synthesizer. It's not, it's not produced, and so it sounds more plain when it's just a little song. Yeah. But it, what you hear, what I hear in my head is way different than what you hear when I just play it. But you know, just the fact the fact that you know so you can come from other side and uh, do things here is uh, is amazing. I think it's uh, just another. Sign of ascension and shift into another reality. Yeah, <laughs> but it will get there, and I know you can do it. Yeah. 
Uh, I will I will wrap it up or we are uh, I, more into channeling. I think I'm going to wrap up early today because I have a lot of things that I have to do. Um, I have to get in touch with my friend about this camping trip because now he wants to go again. So I've been getting messages the whole time I've been doing this. So I need to talk to him. <laughs> you want to talk to him now? Well, yes, but I, I'll see what he's doing. But the thing is, I don't want to interrupt everybody. It might be. Are other. you off to the gathering, Jim? I'm off. I'm supposed to go camping yesterday, but he canceled, so I rescheduled everything. And now <laughs> he's saying he's feeling better. He wants to go today. Zenaida, Zenaida is saying that uh, John is speaking to him and is saying, "Come back home." Is there a song? That says that, or is called that. It says, I'm coming back, is what it's called. Oh, okay. It's uh, Jim, go call him, and I will just speak to the people. I have other things to say. Okay. Right. Excuse uh, me. I'll go. Uh, all right. So uh, be with me. Uh, it's more the, more for aliens, but help me here. So the politics. Um. It is a continuous discussion. It started even before we started, you know, it started more than a year ago. And we want the politics to become better. We want economy to become better. We want to improve that. We want to fix it. And the main what is the main trouble with politics? Let's start the discussion. Let's start the discussion. What are the How main can you fix something that's broken beyond repair? Okay, something is broken because of repair. Fine. So, how do you want to recreate it? What What do you want to build? New systems. How? They're already there. Which ones? There are many new banks. There are many new ideas of banking. Um, there's the reset. There's uh, cryptocurrencies. There's so many new systems. You just have to open up your awareness to these things start using these systems, start supporting these systems, and then the change will come from you using them and not using the old ones. That is the only... While we keep supporting the old systems, we keep reinforcing the ideas of them. So if we want to shift out of them, we have to stop using them. How about... Uh, are you still planning to use the money? The new money? Yes. Here is a problem because most of their uh, civilization out there don't use money at, at all. It's kind of oh, the, so, the, sorry, you're talking on a, a an off-worldly basis. I was talking on a uh, earthly. But basically, we are evolving uh, in uh, in some point. We we have to drop the money altogether. Yes, uh, at some it, point. It at the moment, it's needed. At the moment, we need some sort of uh, exchange system, and it's still present. But the more we start using other systems in replace of those older systems then we can start gradually moving as we see the changes are much more easier to use much more beneficial much more uh, cheaper for businesses to use as well like MasterCard and Visa they take seven and a half percent of every trade so if people see a new system which only takes 0.1 percent they would rather use that trading system than something else for an interaction I understand. Okay, so you're talking so, about an intermediate step for transforming the financial system and then dropping the manual together and convert it to something new. And Max, I, I'm more, go Max ahead. How, how have they suggested any way to fade away the money system? What, what, because what that, I, that seems to be very daunting a task at the moment. So I think a a step down, a um, something to to change to now. The question would be: Is uh, would then they not be willing to let go of that for us to move into no money? So um, have they said anything to you about that? No, uh, they. Uh they keep secret. Keep it secret. They don't explain how they want to do that. Uh, 
the most revealing was the answer by, I believe it was Douglas. When, when I asked him about that, it was like millionth time I asked, you know, how it will be transformed, how do we reinvent the wheel. He said, it will be done for you. And for me, it was uh, an extraordinary answer because I expected that we are supposed to do things and nobody will do it for us. And he said, no, 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 it's a secret and it will be done for you. And that's what I heard before, but it wasn't that blunt. Basically, I heard before that we will be helped by the aliens, by those, whatever, Gork Fitnir and others. They will help us at some point. There will be a transformational thing. So, right now, this dude says, help yourself, but then later, they will be given a go ahead and they will intervene and do something, which is interesting. Bashar talks about Japan will uh, most likely be the first country having free NEE and then then they don't need to pay anything for NEE and they're going to be able to transform without money because of that. This he said uh, that they will drop the money or are you kind of... No, he said, he said that Japan will most likely from that point when he said that, uh, st start with the free energy first. Mm -hmm. And then they will realize how to create an economic system that works so with the talent of the people in Japan. Because they are, they are, they got, if they create free energy, no other country will be, they be, will, will not be connected to other countries in the same way because they don't need any anymore. Right, right. And energy yeah. is always the first cost. Yes, our that's the first thing that costs anything is energy and power. That is the the first step that needs to be almost tackled at the root. Yeah, the main commodities that are traded here are mostly the energy, the weapons, the the pharmaceuticals, and the food, right? And then electronics and everything else. So energy goes first. Yes, when you make energy free, everything else kind of would be different. Yes. Yeah, all falls into place. Yeah. It's working on a ways to cut down the cost of energy. And that is the thing also. Um, yeah. the the devices that are coming on the markets, what we call the free energy devices. Um, I've always put that out there and my intention was that the bankers of the world, uh, the uh, politicians of the world, uh, they would all benefit from it. Um, those at the top um, if it was more of a competition on who could create these devices, still sell them, but create these devices that wouldn't uh, take so much, you know what I mean, like uh, you put a little energy into it, but it produces a lot more, these energy devices. So if, you know, not just giving this free energy away in the beginning, but at least where they could still make their money and still make a competition where they can create the safest, most cleanest devices for the environment and for the people of the planet. Well, the the thing the thing with that, and I can tell you a little bit about this because uh, mm, uh, because of my husband. Um, the the thing that ends up happening is even if you have that, what they put so many regulations and ifs and buts to install these things, and even as a homeowner. Um, you can only produce the energy that it's necessary for you. You can't produce more and let's say give it to your next door neighbor that can't afford it. So so it's not only creating the energy, the, the regulations need to ease up to a certain extent in order to allow that to happen, in order to allow the free flow of energy. So it's it's not only cleaning it up, it's also making sure that it allows for you to share um, what, what you are producing because you can become self-sufficient um, and even produce a little bit more and give it to your next door neighbor or whoever it is that, that needs it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, so yes, completely, yes. I know a lot about these regulations. I tried yes. to start many businesses and every time you start you have a great idea here's a product and the doors are closed because it's, it's all uh, monopolized there is a guild which protects themselves from 
from any outsiders. Yes, that is so much prohibited. Yeah, and then even to install them, there are regulations galore, and and even with the amounts, they measure. Okay, if you how many how much are you using, and you can only that you can only install the amount that you use. At least over here where I am in in New Jersey. So, yeah. so I I think that's also for people to relax about you becoming self-sufficient that there's nothing wrong with being self-sufficient because there's even a woman that got in trouble because she was collecting rain in Florida um, so we need to back up those people that are trying to do those things so when it comes to us it, it, it would be okay the problem is that if if let's say somebody that's doing that gets in trouble and we don't um, tell them you know what you're doing to that person the woman that was collecting the rain is wrong because she had been doing it all along you know this wasn't something new she was doing she did it for years but because it got it went to the public um, then then she got in trouble so how do we help each other stand up for each other and I think um, media the internet I, I think it's a good way to do that. So not just stand and, and go watch, um, and I know they're cute, the cat videos, but also um, help each other when, when somebody needs help. You know, we all stand up for that person so that we start uniting and they start to see that we really mean what we're saying. And whatever happens, I. I went to meetings of 99% movement, and I figured out it's all—all all these movements get uh, hijacked. You know, they're negative people, even maybe not necessarily operative from uh, from uh, uh, whatever government. Just just negative people kind of hijack the any any organization. It kind of rotten's from the top. Even Google now rotten's. You know, you can see they start doing some obviously negative things. Um, so I my, my question is, I guess, the direction where I want to go in this discussion is we have this amazing tool. We have channeling, and we have friends up there who, who are speaking to us. How do we utilize that resource to, to help the humanity? That's, I guess, my, my main Just focus for where first, I want to follow. It has to start at the grassroots movement period. Just what we're doing, sharing the ideas, putting it out there in the universe, just throwing it out there. Little groups over here, little groups over there, combining the groups. You can't, it's not going to happen where, you're right, guys, it's not going to happen where one day you wake up and you have all these devices and it, and it just saves the world. It's, it's each person taking an active, being the active participant in the moment as the moment requires. It's there. It's it's what bringing out to the collective is just by voicing your opinions and standing up. Yes, people were uh, you know put down for their inventions and stuff, but it's how you share the information in a in a wise way that doesn't bring too much attention in the beginning until you can find the people that were really going to back these devices. Right. And like I said before, make it in a way, remember, the government won't allow certain things around because, or they'll buy them out with a lot of money uh, for their inventions because they must make a lot of money themselves. But if something that's going to transform the world overall and, and just a blink of an eye, they usually won't allow it because it just, uh, the systems, it, it does, it, it, it takes away the power. Yeah, because they so call it, it has to be in a way that can distribute it equally, but where everyone can benefit, and they will. Everyone benefits. Everyone on the planet, not just you know the person off the street. It has to be everyone. Yeah, and but, but it's a slow process. It's moving into the, it's 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 a transitioning period. It's not going to be a, just a one big jump. It's a transition period, and that might take another couple decades. Um, to to further your point there, Brian, um, yes. I think I think if we slowly start becoming self-sufficient, even if even if you just start with um, 
your water heater running off a solar panel if that's all you can afford that is one less thing that that you need from somebody else so right. if we slowly start to do that so we become more self-sufficient and not so much rely on others to give us everything right I think then um, they start to see that perhaps the money is not quite there and they start to let go a bit um, I think that might be a, a so maybe a solution <laughs> Yeah. Well, what seems to be happening on a global scale is people seem to be getting into this trap of debt and the need of money, uh, and this illusion is reinforcing the fact that we need the money. In fact, we don't need the money. It's just a useful form of of exchange and uh, a useful way that we can live our daily lives in this amazing, complex society that money has also given us. We should be very grateful for the how money has been used and now we just got to understand how we can change it how we can transform it into something that's more useful and beneficial for this planet yes um, by the same token um, I, I sort of agree you know with uh, who was it that told you this too that we needed to do something for ourselves was was that who was it that, uh, Max? Uh, this loop, yes. Yeah, yeah. But it, but again, it also seems like a very daunting task um, because of the holds that there are. So, I, you know, I, we have some ideas, but um, some clearing, I think, I guess, put it, to put it that way, needs to be done. Um, because the stronghold is it's a very stronghold that there is right now. All right, uh, let, let me inter inter interfere here, intervene here. Okay. Uh, so uh, I hate when discussion goes without mentioning the aliens and the hybrids and the spirits. If it if it becomes a discussion, what we do we do here in in three D, it is not any different than any discussion like there, are billions of discussion going like that. Uh, Thrive, Thrive movie is all about that, and you know, it to me is deadly boring uh, because it's kind of obvious. I lived in Russia when we had freedom. Well, all these restrictions fa uh, at some point failed. It was like 1988. You can create whatever new future you want to create, and you know, we had a lab. I was a you know researcher, young researcher in the lab, and. We tried to create a new science and new way of self-organizing. We voted. We had kind of a democratic society in the in our big big kind of department. It was very funny how you know all these human institutions. It was just it, I learned it from first-hand experience. We tried to do something with three D people, even enlightened ones, like like real good ones, real educated ones, real good scientists, and it just failed because you know. Because we don't have telepathy, and we all have selfish reasons, and we all, you know, are trained to, you know, to fight for to to be on the top. So what I'm saying is, if it doesn't involve aliens, spirituality, and hybrids, it's doomed. It's my strong belief. So let's, you know, I invite you to continue the discussion. Except let's mention, you know. Mention the aliens and move, move our uh, mind towards aliens, hybrids, and spiritual transformation. Um, I agree and disagree with you. <laughs> um, because yeah, there's a part of me that says big task, um, outside influence needed, and there's a part of me that says. We should tighten our belts and get to work. So um, they could be in in may perhaps in the background advising us. You know, this might work, this might not work, that kind of thing. But I, I do agree with this too that we need to do our homework. We need to empower ourselves, and I think telepathy um, would do that. So yes, they they'll be helping us. They'll be um, if we grow, 
if we develop at least telepathy with certain amount of people, we can learn to work as one wheel instead of separate wheels, uh, because we'll be moving at the same at the same pace, and we'll know where we want to go, as opposed to one wheel going this way, the other one that way, and the other one that way. So yes, um, bringing uh, some of those things into us, acquiring some of those. Uh, not acquiring, opening up those talents, talents that we have already within us, uh, would help. And with their help, with their help now, I think it would help us. But I think at the end, it, it is our homework uh, to do. We chose to come yes, here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for, for, um, yeah. Thank you for answering to my plead, 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 plead. Yes. 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 Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think in, in, in that sense, it's it, it's I would say it's eighty percent us. Oh, of course, ninety-nine percent us. Of course. Yeah. And then I, I wonder how many of them are there. I think uh, my sense is that there are like twenty or forty aliens, you know, working on human project and uh, from Gurkfitnir. Not not too many. Now they say 227 minus 87 is like whatever number. I can't count. Uh, 100 something, 40. Um, so we get um, 140 aliens in human colonies who deal with us. But they, you know, some of them are not working on politics. They help our weather, telepathy. So I, I don't even think uh, any people in the colony really work on human politics and economy. So there would be a different department, which is completely secret right now. OK, um, here is the story. Uh, I started 99, oh no, 2009, and I wrote my, I made my first presentation. I wrote my first book. And then I um, was a year and a half of my research. And then I discovered there was so-called anonymous. Not the, this anonymous, a different anonymous. Uh, he also called him Allendale. So I did research on this guy, and um, he was, if you look at my channel, you can find him. He basically, uh, at some point, uh, an operative from, uh, from, from that organization, which I don't even have a name, like Alien Operation Organization. We need some name for it. Um, can you create a name for it? Because we need a name. Uh, Department of ground operations, alien department of ground operations, something like that, alien, alien department of ground operations, alien department, Odogo, yeah, Odogo, O-D-O-G-O, alien department, alien department of ground operations, how about that? So this alien department of ground operations, uh, they have operatives, secret operatives down here, uh, they have somebody who lives here. They have somebody who cycles back and forth, who have like passports and can appear anywhere, have technologies, and they have people up there who do, you know, collection of information, analyzing, then sending it to Arcturian consul and, uh, you know, negotiating with different things. So, and they have communications with military, politician, commercial people, men in black, you know, reptilians on the ground, and everybody else. So this Department of Ground Operations, um, at some point, uh, they wanted to save someone. And they appeared on a radio show just saying, you know, stop, stop bothering him. You, like, basically, some military or whatever, how they call them, secret services, human secret services tried to harass one of the light workers. And someone just appeared on a radio show saying, stop that, because you didn't clear it with your superiors. And if you did clear, then you you would understand you, you can't uh, harass a flight worker. So that was an amazing revealing of, you know, under underworkings of things. It was a couple of years ago. So now it's kind of history. But um, you understand that things are happening there. And if you read the literature and research, especially Kerry Cassidy's, um, how do you call it? Camelot project on YouTube. It's pretty dark, but you you g get a glimpses of a lot of works up there. And again, I don't want to focus on that. It's not my main focus. Uh, but but there is, there are things happening. They you know aliens are involved in politics and commerce and things like that. 
And uh, that's where I think uh, we need more help. Well, look, we got Simon Parks, who's a Labour MP in, in England, and he openly talks about his, uh, his mother being an insectoid. Insectoid. Yeah, really? he, he, he does talks on it, he's a standing candidate, he's actually elected candidate, and um, he openly talks about his alien in, in, encounters, and that was done with Project Avalon, which is Bill's branch of the Project Camelot, yeah. after Kerry and uh, Bill split uh -huh. Yeah, separated. Yes. Uh, Hi, we Michael. need more trying to go down towards the Avalon route, but... Uh, Michael, I'll mute, mute you because it's echoes, but it's nice to see you. Hi. All right. So, um, yes. So now we have the colony, and then when I planned the colony, when I wrote my first book, my idea was <clears throat> that uh, colonies would be much more involved in the, in the groundworks, and apparently they are not. They are not at all. Uh, right now, again, these are four colonies. Number one is telepathy. It's developing in our abilities. Number two is developing our health uh, and spiritual health. Number three, developing the videos, but they don't have a way to download them. Download. It's like down from the sky. Download. But they actually upload them to YouTube and make them. And number four is channeling. So the only thing they can do is channeling. But again, we don't even deal with the guys who channel. We can deal with a few guys who channel, but there is tons more who channel to others. And uh, I, I think it is somehow channelers are coordinated, but we didn't speak to this channeling coordination committee. So I want to develop that. In any way, my idea was that um, we need, uh, apparently the aliens have this still non-involvement uh, prime directive idea that they cannot really go and do things down here much, at least don't do that openly. We still have the illusion of self-governance, illusion of free will, not only on personal level, but on global level. But what they could do is to invite people up there and train them. And they could do, they could help light workers with information and training, and they could help uh, dark workers by enlightening them. Uh, I didn't mean dark workers in a way like dark magic, 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 but I meant how about inviting people, politicians and financial, influential people, influential people up there and giving some of them some uh, enlightenment. I think that would be an amazing project and I don't think, I never heard from our friends that they do that. They sort of started planning but then they never mentioned it again. There was a discussion. Go ahead. Max, I think the uh, the politics and economics are being uh, discussed by a different group. I might be wrong about this, but that's what I just got in my head. Yes, yes, exactly. And by some reason, I, you know, it, I'm pulled to that discussion as well. So, yes, there is a separation. There is like... Uh, very light-minded uh, human colonies separated from politics and economy, from anything important. And uh, we are more into ascension stuff. And there is another group which we don't know what it is. And I'm just, uh, I don't see a whole picture. There's a hole in the picture. I, I don't see the whole picture. I see a hole in the picture, okay? There is a hole in my picture of the world. And this hole is big. And it is influential people dealing with aliens. I want to know more about that. I don't Max, know, maybe it's well, not, not supposed to. Max, can you, trust that, can you trust that hole to be filled positively? It's a cryptic question. What do you mean? I mean that you see a picture, and some yeah. part of it you don't understand or don't clearly see. Yes. Can you trust that that hole will be colored in in a beautiful way? That's your rather than worrying about it rather than I'm talking generally to everybody here as well not just you sometimes in our life we have certain areas we do not understand certain areas that are dark to us 
But I the trust of it. My researcher freedom. I want. It's my interest. It's my higher excitement at the moment, is to research this dark hole. I'm. I'm. I'm not interested uh -huh. in politics per se, but. I want. I have some ideas, and I want them to be implemented. And I don't see them implemented. I think the people who are working on that, they are blinded by current situation, and I want them to enlighten them. I'm a teacher, and I want to teach them. That's my excitement at the moment. Okay, so, but but that that would be assuming that they are they are the ones that are going to be implementing those changes. Do you see what I'm saying? So so. It might just be that those changes are not going to be implemented by them, but by the rest of us, which, which really then it's it's just an exercise, because um, when there is a system that it's not working, the change has to come from without the system, um, and. I hate to sound cliched, but we the people are the ones that have to do it. Because if if you're a politician, Max, and you keep telling me, no, I'm going to tear down your house, I'm going to tear down the house, I'm going to tear down your house, um, I can't go to you to save my house. I have to go somewhere else to try and save it. And you have this set of ideas in your head that my house must be tear down. So what I'm trying to say is that um, I think working within the system, a system that no longer works, that it's it's full of cancer, um, you're you're just adding to the soup, sort of speak. Um, and and getting a clear mind, there might be some that you might be able to do that with. Okay, some that are already uh, maybe borderline, um, but when you are benefiting from a system greatly, you're not going to want to change that because you benefit from that, and that's just human nature. You can't blame them for that. Uh -huh. All right, here is my creative solution. Here is my creative solution. There is a human colony, uh, very remote from human affairs, very remote, very separated from human affairs. All it does is train light workers and trade channelers and not to get involved in human affairs. There is Department of Ground Operations of the Aliens, which does military stuff, and uh, sometimes they even have some operations, pretty dark ones, which have to be kept secret, and they cannot even disclose what they do. They have their own policies and own secrecy. Now, how about creating an intermediate department, which involve some of those and some of those and invite more aliens from the universe, from the galaxy, who would uh, allow to be allowed to speak about their policies and uh, invite some uh, influential people, not necessarily military, not necessarily politician, not necessarily financials. How about celebrities? Some enlightened celebrities to hang around and be more interacting, doing the first contact out there, because it's not happening, I don't see it happening. I want more preparation works, more discussing what to do, more, uh, a lot can be done by, you know, by our celebrities and our grassroots people and positive politicians, uh, enlightened people. How about this uh, suggestion? I called okay. it colony number 15, but we can give it another name. I want some playground where we can really do something that matters to the ground. I understand what you're saying, um, but all of these plans are being uh, talked about, and uh, when it's deemed necessary, all of this will be revealed to all of you. At the moment, uh, disclosing anything Anything that is being planned at the moment, um, which is mean the the letting go, the destruction of the plan. So we cannot reveal anything to you at this moment. But please know that all of this is being planned, all of this is being looked at, and that you will receive help from all of us. But um, we acknowledge we acknowledge your concerns. We acknowledge that. 
Um, uh, a lot of things at the moment seem very chaotic, but know that we are working on all of these matters. And yes, there is a group of us already taking care of this. Um, but and there are also humans. Please do be aware of that. That there are humans that are working with us. Well, their identity, for the most part, are not revealed for obvious reasons. Um, but um, awareness, awareness of yourself, it's what we need at the moment, so that when things come about, you make your decisions from um, your awareness, from knowing that all of you are connected. So we just wanted to come in and, and make you aware of these matters. And thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And know that we are here. Uh, thank you much. I am aware a little bit of what you're saying, and I'm aware more. I still believe it's not enough the activity of light workers in the open contact is not enough and activity of the aliens is not sufficient. I think if we create a new colony number 15 or whatever where we just develop the contact, the, the focus of that colony as I intended was and then I still intended is to develop more contact, teach more aliens human life, whatever it is and teach more humans the alien life. Uh, Max, that's not that, is, that, that, is, that. that is simply your perception. It is only a perception. Uh -huh. That is that is that is all. Um, being not being able to see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means that you, it hasn't been brought into your awareness of it. That it's that exactly. is all. My research doesn't show that it exists. Yes, I want it to be much more visible. And also, I'd like to reflect on what John had to say earlier, if that's yes. if you don't mind. Yes. And that is the fact that people think they are doing the right thing. And many people on this planet believe and understand they are doing the right thing, even though in our perception, I we agree. might think it's the wrong thing, uh -huh. or it's not the right direction. Mm -hmm. But they believe they are because of their love for their people around them, their family, the way they enjoy things. Or maybe they're disillusioned of the world. They still believe they're doing the right thing. Uh -huh. This is going to change in the next few years. And this is what will be the crucible point of change. And it's been told and almost, don't like to use the word, but prophesized in a way that the change will happen. And we just got to let it see how it pans out and adapt to it as well. All right. Uh, yeah. I yeah. need to wrap up right yeah. now. It's 12:30, and Jim is making circles, showing me the sign that you know I have to wrap up. Um, I will end up with a blessing. Um, we highlighted a lot of interesting points. I want to develop them more. Thank you for the message, Sabrina. Thank you for the message, uh, Ravi. Um, I have to say goodbye. And Jim is going to say goodbye. Yeah, just Max, just just know that that work is being done, and uh, you know, I, I there's certain things I can't say, but it is being done. So I'm inviting more open part of that work to be brought to our awareness. I am going to say goodbye. I am going camping, and he's coming very shortly. So. Yes. <laughs> I okay, need Jim. Bye, Jim. Have fun camping. Be safe. Jim, will, will you be back to Monday? I'll be back or? by Monday. Okay. I'll be back before your session on Monday. All right. Sunflowers are tall and big and absolutely beautiful. We thank this dude and everybody who works on our weather. The weather last few weeks was incredible. The August, I guess it was my best August ever. I hate August, but this August was not as bad as others. Well, it's because this was an Aquarian August. The, the only full moon was in Aquarius in August this year. So, yes, thank you for the music, everybody. Thank you for the music, John. Thank you for the music of the colors and sunflowers and the love.
which is vibrant these days. I wish everybody peace and balance while moving forward. Keep walking forward, keep running forward, and stay in balance. That's the challenge and the essence of today. Keep moving forward. Strive forward. Raise up like sunflowers. Raise up like wind and fog and waves and stars and starship. Move forward. Be persistent. Be successful. Thank you, Max. Well, much you love to you all. I'm sorry that we have to sort of make it shorter today, but I really want to go camping. So I think it'll be wonderful to get out into the nature and beauty and all that stuff. And uh, I, he had a backache yesterday, so he didn't go yesterday. I wasn't really supposed to be here this morning. So I was here, so maybe that was the plan, just for me to be here this morning. Oh, yeah. And the plan is for me to go now. And have fun camping. Thank you. I will. Bye, Jim. Bye-bye. <laughs> Much love to you all, and I will see you soon. Um, I love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I love you, too. Bye. Bye, Max. Bye. Thanks, Max.